What's up guys, in this video I wanted to show you a little bit about how I analyze price action and what I look for to enter a trade. I'm going to do a little back testing, um, show you some of the price action patterns that I look for and show you my setup. So this is the TraderVate platform which I use in conjunction with Ninja as well as <clears throat> as well as um, Jigsaw for order flow, which I'm still not very good at. Um, I find there's also a lot of spoofing on Jigsaw with the big orders coming in and disappearing, and sometimes more orders will come on the buy side, yet the market will be going down and vice versa. So I'm still trying to figure out all the ins, of, ins and outs of order flow along with volume profile and all of this stuff to analyze but for the most part I really heavily rely on price action and trend lines and a little bit of ATR average true true range um, so so this is uh, a big move down just before the open see how everything is green my average true range on the trade of eight anytime there is an extreme movement in one direction or the other relative to where the market is in the moment it will show green going down and red going up I know it's a little bit backwards but that's just the way this indicator works and how I have it set up I can show you here this is the indicator I don't really use a lot of indicators but this one kind of gives me an idea to the relative strength that's going on it's called the one green candle and whoever made this uh, indicator made it in mind for people who are who are dip buyers or who are looking to find tops I, I believe and I'm not one of those people and I actually do the opposite of what I think the indicator is designed to be used for so let's say it breaks below the structure right here we're climbing down it goes up a little bit little counter trend pops it goes back down nice little pop up you don't want to be caught chasing this right the indicator would be showing you where it's at on the extreme in this case it would be good so it's hitting the red lines on the true range and then you'd want to go short but I don't like to go short thinking I figured out the top or the bottom I actually like to do it more so when it has broken a structure it gives me a little bit more uh, confidence in the direction and I know a lot of people aren't comfortable doing that but it's just how I like to trade so look the person who shorted when it broke the structure here I'm gonna zoom in this is the uh, five minute chart by the way if you haven't figured that out so it broke below structure big green candle BAM relative to the strength for that move showing a lot of sellers are just piling in I would try to get in and just jump in and start shorting the market and you can see these tails involved in here too tails means fails or a pullback so it's gonna short all the way down crash 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 some dip buyers came in they brought it up a little bit maybe some profit taken by the bears and then it got shorted right back down okay so this would be the wick test okay and it would be testing this area and if it got up above here I would not want to be shorting anymore if it stays uh, but it, it you know went up here a little bit and then it came back down that's very common so um, I would be shorting looking for a nice couple scalps and a runner because of the strength and that's for this situation okay true range is showing that it's just dumping I like a big obvious dump or an obvious pump that's what I call them okay so that's just before the bell all right this is the one minute chart this is the daily chart this is the most important uh, chart on this screen Okay, you got to look at at least three or four different time frames at the same time. I got the daily, one minute, five minute is where I look for most of my entries. Okay, 
and I kind of uh, look here at the 200 minute, which is you know a little bit more than an hour. Um, I mean a little bit more than two hours, sorry. Uh, so you get all the gap ups and gap fills. I love a market that is filling gaps. All right, I want to be a part of the gap fill. That's my main strategy when I'm passing challenges, when I'm going big on my accounts, whenever I find it is a good opportunity to make a bunch of money. The type of uh, trader that I want to be is the, the most patient type that can wait for the, these big opportunities instead of just trying to scalp you know, 100 times a day, which I do do that too, especially if I'm in the hole. All right, that's a different topic, but the gap fills. Okay, this is another strategy that I'm looking for. All right, this broke out of the range here. Let's look on this 200 minute chart. Let's say here it broke out, neckline shot up. This would be an obvious buy day. Okay, you don't want to be uh, a noob thinking that you're going to be smart enough to pick the tops and short the tops here because you're just going to get so crushed all the way up. And I've been humbled more times than I can count trying to find the tops and find the bottoms. And that's just not my strategy anymore. It's not my style. I'm trying to ride in with the big boys when they're going in one direction or the other. And I'm trying to avoid reversals. I hate V-shaped reversals unless... I obviously can spot it when I'm shorting. Sometimes like this big move right here, you can have a big V-shaped reversal, you know? It could just shoot right back up. And in which case, I would probably, if I bought or shorted, sorry, too, uh, too close down here and I didn't get out, I could get caught up and then get a short squeeze and I'd have to cover my position and take a loss. But I, that's actually what happened to me on this day. So I was shorting, shorting, making some money, caught shorting, adding more onto my position, had to give back too much of my profit, and then I realized, hey, this is probably a V-shaped reversal, we're probably going to start apexing, and that's what I'm looking for all the time as well, is the, uh, the dreaded apex, I call it the triangle of death, when it's just making one big triangle, where the bulls are, are running it up, and then bears ring it, uh, bring it right back down, and then it's hitting a trend line in a slant this way, and it's hitting a trend line on a slant that way, and then it just compresses. And that's what it did on this day. So let's go ahead and unpause this replay. This is Trade of Eight replay, which I use all the time when I'm practicing, especially on Saturdays, going over stuff. This chart down here is called the uh, tick volume. This is what I pay a little bit extra for every month. It tells me what is going on under the hood, like how fast it's going. And right now I have it at 400% speed, so it's going super fast. Let's go ahead and slow it down a bit. So I think this is where I got caught up. You know, I got short squeezed a little bit, and I would look to get out on a pullback and get back in on the direction of the trend, and that's exactly what I did, and I got my money back. So my day yesterday was kind of swinging a little bit up and down and all around. So, all right, you can zoom in here. I love the trade of eight charts. Um, honestly, I don't really use these indicators so much uh, as for entry, except it just gives me a relative bias. It kind of it kind of confirms what I'm already thinking. So, zoom in here. Why is it not zooming in? Okay, this is the tick volume, all right? Per every 40 t ticks uh, on the uh, 40 is what I'm using 40 volume okay so when it's ripping like this off the bottom it goes up it gives a little stare back down and then it rips back up a little stare back down the NASDAQ is very uh, uh, famous for doing this so I would obviously want to be buying on the pullback these are micro pullbacks on the tick chart Okay, when it starts going sideways like this, I try to avoid it because then you get, you know, less clarity. Um, obviously, we are in the strong trend, and this is what it looks like on the tick chart in a strong trend. And here's the five minute. So zoom in a little bit. We're pumping right back up. It has created a support down here. Okay, so the next resistance, the next gap that it wants to fill is probably up here. And it's going to make probably 
a little bit less, or if it shoots up above, it can have an overshoot, or it could stay within the triangle of death, and I believe that's what happened on this day. Okay, so let's go ahead and kick start it up to 400%. Let's pretend, do some pretend trades. All right, we're gonna bring the, we're just gonna enter in on the market. All right, I'm gonna show you how. Just jump in. You, you don't think to yourself, oh my God, I didn't buy the bottom. I, I can't get in, it's too high now. I don't think like that. Okay, look, this is one many. Obviously, this is more than I'm comfortable with trading with. On uh, most days, I like to trade micros. I probably put on, I think I put on four or five micros here, so it'd be half of this. And um, I like to give myself wiggle room too. You don't want to be going balls to the wall on every trade, especially if you don't have a cushion. You got a cushion, you can add it up a little bit. And that's what I do. That's another thing I do. I like to add to my winning positions. If I make more money, I like to add, add a little bit more to my positions most of the time. Most people do the opposite. They make a little bit more and then they want to like reduce and then they get too comfortable and, then, and they're just like, I'm scared to lose. I do that sometimes too, but for the most part, I want to like take advantage of the day because when the opportunity is there, I, I do believe it's important to kind of hit hard. You know, when you've sat and waited for the right time, you want to press uh, when you can. Okay, as you can see, we've been in profit pretty much the entire time of this trade. I think it went down just a little bit in drawdown. Not too much, though. Look, 600 bucks. Right here, you can see the P&L swing. 540 is what it's doing. You don't want to get out thinking, oh my gosh, I already got a nice little chunk of money. I got to get out now and, 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 and secure this profit because it could come back on me. Yeah, it could, but the, the probability of it going up is much higher with this uh, move back up, and it's already created a V shape. Yes, it could do a double bottom uh, W, or it could do a lowercase h, and then just tumble all the way down. But that's why you have the daily chart over here. That's why you have to use contextual technical allowance, uh, analysis. Sorry, I don't know what I'm thinking about allowance, anyways. So you come over here, you look at the daily. I would not be thinking that this is going to be a lowercase uh, bear channel, which looks like a lowercase h where it just comes down, pops up a little bit, goes back down, pops up a little bit, goes back down. I would expect that more on these red candle daily chart candles, okay? But we have broke above this neckline. This is the daily, this is the most important. Here's the long term trend. Down, down, down we go. Here we go, down, a little bit up, a little bit of bull trap there, down, a little bit of bull trap there, down, a little bit of bull trap there. After a few days in a bear trend, you can kind of predict and, and anticipate. I, I'm thinking we got a little bull trap coming. And this is where all the noobs and the beginners get caught up thinking, oh, this is gonna be the bottom. This is the bottom. This is where it's going to be. I'm going to buy. I'm going to load up. I'm going to buy. I'm going to load up. And this is going to be the bottom. So great. I've always wanted to catch the bottom. This is the greatest place right here to buy. It's so low. You get analysts on TV saying the same thing, thinking that, you know, hey, I got a 50 50 shot of sounding like I know what I'm talking about here. So they say, this is going to be the bottom. We're, we've been too long in a downtrend. And most of the time, it's not okay the trend will continue for much 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 longer than you can anticipate so i just get it out of my head that i'm trying to figure out the tops and the bottoms of long-term trends okay so i don't think about trying to pick tops and bottoms this is my strategy you can have whatever strategy you want this is my video sharing what my strategy is and this is how i trade so that's what this video is i look at the trend lines Trend lines are our friends, and when they break, you kind of want to go with, see how this trend line came down? It broke above it, it started to show, peak out above it, it's showing strength. This is the next a level of resistance. Okay, if I'm buying down here, I'm thinking, you know what, I'm, I'm only buying dips now. I'm buying double bottoms, I'm buying the overshoots on double bottoms, and I'm going to ride it up. I'm not being a bear anymore. Okay, so... Uh, after this trend line has started to form in a red candle, this would be a, a sell signal. This is the daily, and then this would be a definite confirmation bar. So from right here, I'm looking to short counter trend bull pops. And here's the tricky part about shorting. 
you can have a very noticeable bull trend that goes on for a while, even a whole day or most of the day. But at the end of the day or whatever, the bears can take over in an instant and just crush all the gains that the bulls had in such a short amount of time. It's like the saying goes, bulls take the stairs and bears take the elevator. And a lot of times bears don't even take the elevator. Elevator, They just jump out the freaking window or go skydiving. And you'll end the day with a huge red candle or a, you know, a medium-sized red candle. And it's just been bullish all day and except for the last 10 minutes of the day or 20 minutes of the day. It could just be boom, boom, boom. So that's why it can be very, very difficult to trade in a bear market. And it's good to just take it easy and just be very, very cautious and actually trade much smaller. And it was summertime during all of this, so it doesn't take much volume for a price to fall. It could fall at its own weight when, when the bears are taken over. So uh, I think I've covered pretty much everything. Uh, price action, a little bit of uh, uh, where we're at on the uh, daily and Okay, we got a little bit of a, a pullback here, so it's a micro triangle here. Let's go ahead and get this going. I always look for little triangles everywhere. Are we contracting? Is price contracting? Is it expanding? Okay, doesn't mean that triangles are the way to trade, but for me, that's what I look at. I'm looking at it, and they pop up so many times after another. It's just because it's just. Bulls and bears are battling it out, and it's a fight. And really, you want to be avoiding triangles, whether they're expanding or contracting. Okay, so we got a little triangle formation here. It's a micro triangle. All right, let me get my trend line going. And who do, who do I think is going to win? You got to think with your probability hat on now. Okay, god dang it, it's not coming out. Let's go. Come on. There we go. Little mini triangle. All right. You can see the other one. What? I said stop. All right. This price, uh, this replay is at 400% right now, so it's going faster than I can even draw out the triangle. All right. Mini triangles. All right. Price is contracting. You see that red candle forming on the five minute here? That's the relative price for the. Uh, the strength for the price at where it's at right now. It's shooting up above this contracting triangle. And the strength is obviously on the bull side again. And you know what? I bought right here. And it shot up. And I made uh, my losses back right here. I actually I bought small here. And I held through just kind of like how I bought here. I bought small here. That's what I did yesterday. Shot up. It went around. And it came back down below my entry like a slight bit. It was somewhere right around here. And you know what? I was like, you know what? I'm just going to add on again. And it went up and I, and I added on again and again. And once I saw that it is shot up and I saw a confirmation, I added on to my winning position. And I know that's very hard for a lot of people to do, but it's what you got to learn how to do to stay in the game. And it will shorten your learning curve on your road to becoming a consistent, profitable trader. And that's what I've learned from uh, listening to all the legends on YouTube. And uh, Trader Tom was uh, the one who said that. I got that from him. So this is a mini. And I'm up 1100 bucks on this one trade from down here. I predicted the price action here. But I didn't trade this much size yesterday. This is the chart from yesterday, obviously. I traded with five micros. So I was up about 500 bucks, but I was actually down a couple hundred and I missed the big drop. I probably would have been up more, but I had not turned on my computer until a little bit too late. So, um, we're going up to the top. Okay. We're going to test it. Where do we get out? We don't think that it's going to break out. Okay. You don't want to ever think that way. You don't want to think, oh my gosh, this is going to be the one, this is going to be the runner. Unless you actually believe that. Now, a lot of the times you're not catching the runner unless it's particular to the time of the day. Uh, unless it's sometimes it's at the open or just after the open. Usually it's not during the lunch hours. OK, 
okay you get a lot of chop big money's going out to eat they come back power hour comes in then you can might think hey I, I caught a runner if the conditions are proving themselves to be that way now it is good to add on to your positions and hope for a big win don't get me wrong I'm not trying to contradict myself here it's just you got to do it with the right time of day with the right sort of uh, certain amount of with the right kind of circumstances is what I'm trying to say okay so look at the behavior of this this is don't want if I ever see this I never want to think wow this is ripping so high I want to be able to catch the top no 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 I have been humbled way too many times doing that I don't do that anymore I, if I see this behavior on my tick chart which I love by the way if you don't have tick chart and then you want a little edge in the market get trade of eight platform get the tick chart it always looks very readable and this is for the indices you know this is for the stock indices in the equities of the nasdaq futures which overlooks the nasdaq and then i think that reading the tick chart for the nasdaq is much uh more readable than the es the es looks okay too let's go ahead and pop up the es chart here all right es boom boom and it's gonna it should pop up the tick chart for this uh, you know it looks readable we we'll come over here we can see the rip on the ES pretty smooth actually it's not too bad I don't like the ES as much as I like the NASDAQ I've just been accustomed to it for so long alright so here we are we're testing the top of the uh, 200 exponential moving average that's what I use for my trend if we're below it it's a bear trend if we're test testing it, it's the test of the counter trend big bull pop, like I explained, trading in a, in a bear market, which you can have big swings up and down. You could get burned in a bear market shorting at the wrong place. Okay, so 200 exponential moving average. Got the one green candle, no diddle in the middle. It's designed for scalping, which I really don't use it that much. Uh, I just use it for confirmation based. I don't use it for scalping for a little quick here, points here, points there. I'm looking for the the good gap fill swings and runners. Okay, so that's pretty much it with my analysis and how I look for trades. You got your different time frames that you have to look at, your different biases. Uh, right now in the market, as of 8, today is 8 6, Saturday 2022, I am looking to buy dips. I am looking to buy the dip we're above the neckline we're testing this one right now it might get a little shaky i'm gonna try to do my best to avoid some sideways chop because lord knows i am not the best at trading the chop i mean i can make some money here and then i lose it and i lose some money more and then i might have a big run up and then i spend all my whole day just ending up break even or a small loss or a small win it feels like i'm just working for nothing so it's best to just avoid that stuff if you see an imbalance where it's just, I mean, it's just two balance rather, they're just battling it out and, you know, and breakout traders are getting tra uh, trapped and trend traders are getting trapped and everybody's confused. Are we going up? Are we going down? People in the chat rooms, okay, this is another thing I use for my fundamental analysis. I'm using Benzinga Pro right now. It's Saturday. I'm coming on here. I'm looking at all the market data for all my favorite stocks. I've been checking out AMC is my favorite meme stock. I will throw that some money on that. In my personal accounts, when it's ripping, it's one of the easiest meme stocks to make money. The breakouts are so predictable when they're just ripping. You can get a few quick, easy points. Look, from 17, rip, 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 all the way up to 22. So this is what I use for my fundamental analysis. When I start doing some more streams, I will probably show a lot of my Benzinga Pro but right now uh, it's summertime my kids are still at home my family is at home they're all out shopping right now doing some back to school shopping and I got the house to myself so I decided why not turn on the camera turn on some charts do some back testing have some fun record some videos and that's what I'm doing so here we go all right we're tested the area it's red it is showing its strength up, but it is starting to wane, all right? It is coming back down. Chop, chop, chop. Candles here. Wicks inside bar, all right? The red candle is fading. 
That means the relative strength for the bulls are starting to disappear. Bears are coming back in. It's breaking below structure. And I actually made money shorting this too. I'm not trying to say I'm the perfect trader, but once it became so obvious that we were not going much above this high and it was gonna fill this gap again, I actually shorted I made a bunch of money coming down. I actually had a pretty decent day yesterday. Not to brag or anything, but it was a good day. Good day for technical analysis, and I thought it'd be a perfect day to kind of show how I trade. I've been having some people ask, what's your strategy? What's your indicators? How do you find entries? What do you look for? And all this stuff. So I'm trying to cram it all in in this quick video. There's many different styles of trading, and it doesn't matter what style you use. As long as you make money from it, that's all that matters, and that's how I look at it. And uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and stop with this video for now. Um, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and back out of this uh, replay, and I will speed up to the end of the day to show you what it looked like, just in case you didn't trade. I can show you what I was talking about, all right? I use this replay software all the time, Trade of 8. Uh, it works great. Um, okay, so we can go to the time here. I always, when I do my replays, I start at the beginning, you know, the beginning of the day. But let's go ahead and go to 2 o'clock. All right, let's make it 2.15. Not in. Let's make it, oh, this is seconds. Don't care about that. Okay, 2.15. Maybe we'll finish up the day here on this uh, replay. We'll turn turn up the speed. Price loves to bounce off trend lines. Okay, use your trend lines, guys. If you don't, I don't always draw my stuff out, but I will use it in my head, just visualizing it where it is. Okay, let's make this smaller. Okay, so it looks a little different after all the day has played out. Um, draw my, what am I doing here? Sorry. Okay, so here's the, why does it do that? All right, trend line. trend that it broke in the morning. Okay, as you can see, the seven, big drop, pumped up, came back down, com price compressed, shot up again, came back down towards this trend line. It's not a perfect trend line, never is. 
no trade is ever perfect either guys so don't think that I'm making a hundred percent of my trades or anybody is if they say they are it's a lie uh, as you can see though lots of price touching trend lines and bouncing off and returning and all that good stuff and like I heard from the uh, famous trading book trading for a living prices touch trend lines and recoil because people have memories they remember where price was they remember the resistance they remember the support they remember the the trend the, the slope of the trend and all that and they they will exit positions and they will get out of uh, losing positions and they will hold winners until they touch trend lines and take their profits so it's all based on human psychology what the computers are programmed to do don't ever blame your uh, algorithms for your losses actually I don't ever think that they do make the computer uh, the trading platforms do some weird things sometimes big spikes and you know drop back down and shoot back up that we just got to get used to um, so most of the computer algorithms are programmed to keep making money until they don't make money anymore and that's when the programmers jump back in and start reprogramming one of the say sayings I've heard from uh, shadow trader is that I really like was uh, keep doing what works until it doesn't work anymore and that's exactly what I think all the algorithms are doing so you can see they shorted and shorted and shorted and eventually when it broke out of this and they stopped making money they had to reprogram and then when it started to come back down they had to reprogram and this trend line right here was broken and look it started to shoot back up and as you can see here it compressed a little bit more like this compress compress this is the crossroads the the point of nobody knows where it's gonna go volume slows up and it starts moving a little bit here a little bit there a little bit here a little bit there and then the little bulls start to get a little bit more confident start shooting up more buyers start coming in momentum traders start coming in break art breakout traders that are sitting on the sidelines start coming in bears that were crapping their pants start exiting the positions and the process just continues over and over again and I've been staring at these charts now for uh, with the NASDAQ especially um, for you know almost three years now uh, with the futures stocks I've been trading a lot longer than that but I really didn't get into the futures until hardcore until beginning of 2020 and I've studied a lot of Al Brooks. I've went through his course about five times as well. Um, Trader Tom, I recommend him. Uh, Trading for a Living book. Um, Mark Douglas, Trading in the Zone. What else? Um, there's a few other books that I've read that have helped me out a lot. Uh, Jesse Livermore, his uh, reminiscence of a stock operator that's another great one and that's pretty much it guys that's all my recommendations that's my strategies I like to break below the uh, take the trades when they break structures when they're obvious dump days and obvious pump days avoid the chop if I get in the chop and I mean if I get in a trade and it starts to chop around I will take my small profit or I will take a break even and that happens to me me many times as well I will hold on to what I think will be a winner and sometimes if it's not a winner I will uh, exit out for a small win or a break even and I've tried to also eliminate having winning trades turn into losing trades I just don't see the point of doing that I know some people swear up and down by oh I don't move my stops to break even because I need to give it that room. So here's my uh, thoughts on that. You have to have your initial wiggle room. For me on the NASDAQ, it is five points. If I'm in a winner that goes up five points and it comes back down, granted I'm not in too big of a position size and it comes back down and I get nothing, I'm okay with that. If it goes up 10 points and it comes back down and I get nothing, and eh, you know it kind of sucks a little bit if it goes up any more than that I'm 
probably going to scalp out and just take a little something off the table because I get that feeling ah, I should have taken some profit. You know, I don't want to leave so much on the table all the time, if, especially if it keeps happening over and over. I will start taking those small profits. Okay, I'm actually trying to cram all of my thought processes and all my trading strategies and all my thoughts on how I look at the market and all of this into one video and I'm talking pretty fast and my throat's getting a little raspy. Uh, it's okay. I'm about to stop here soon. Um, is there anything else? Um, one of the things I'd like to share with all the beginning or struggling traders uh, you got to stop buying uh, the, the bottoms and stop trying to short the very tops. Just get that out of your mind. Also, uh, don't add on to losers. That is the thing. Um, Trader Tom talks about this a lot with his uh, psychology videos. Go watch those. I recommend those. I'm not trying to create some course or anything to make a bunch of money off people from selling courses. I just try to focus on my trading and helping people at the same time and creating my also trading journal through videos with this. Like I said, I'm gonna start streaming some more. So if you wanna be a part of that journey, hit the like and subscribe in that regards. Um, so don't add on to losers, learn how to add on to winners. Uh, video from an old bonds trader by the name of Charlie D. He's got a book out and he's also got a great video of him giving a speech on what makes a great futures trader and what makes the less successful ones, ones that have even been trading for a long time. And a lot of that has to do with people's psychology and wanting to keep adding on to losers and having hope when they should just be getting out of losers and fear of letting winners turn into losers and taking that profit way too soon. So they're doing the exact opposite. So, you know, I'd like to draw a little sketch here if I could find a little uh, doodle, doodle. Doodle on. Let me a little something real quick share some of my thoughts on this and what I've had to try to flip my way of thinking when it comes to winners and how I hold the winners and how I hold the losers. Uh, let's see if I can just find something that's doodle for free. Oh my gosh, you want me to pay? No, thank you. I... Let's see if I can find something. Doodle for free. Free. Okay, online, free doodle pad, okay. Hopefully this will give me something to doodle real quick. All right, let's say this is your entry line, right? You're entering here. This is your en entry on this trade, okay? You're buying, okay? The market has been falling and you want it to come up and you want it to shoot back up to the all time highs from the overnight session and you feel that it's gonna V bottom and go back up there or whatever the situation is. So most people, let's say they buy here and they're hoping to go here. All right, and I used to do this all the time too. And then market, and you think this is a bargain area. This is the value area low. I hear so many traders, oh, the value area, value area. I don't wanna think about value area. I wanna think about strength, okay, so. I try to just get value area out of my head, all right? But some people can make money from value area. I, I tried it, doesn't work for me. And here's my little uh, example on this, okay? So you buy and it goes down. And you're like, man, I was very convinced that this was the support, this was it, this is the double bottom, I waited. It was making it down here, it's come down, I was gonna buy right here, this is the support, all right? I bought here, and, and and this and this is your trade. It's just going down. You buy again, all right. You've made a little bit of money this morning too already. You know you got a little confidence up, okay. And comes up here. Um, you're like ooh. I'm getting some uh, good feeling here. It's going back up. Can I redo this one? This one sucks. 
Yeah. Okay. All right. That again. Sorry for my kind of a perfectionist. All right. One more time. Dude, what am I doing? Okay. Why is it not going? Here's what most people do, okay? They buy, thinking this is the bottom, and it comes down here. Okay. And they're thinking, wow, this is even better and of a of a value area, so I'm gonna buy down here. I'm gonna buy some more. Right? And they put on ah oh, god. Mess up again. Sorry guys. Alright, one more time. They buy, they buy again. They buy again right here. This is their entry, initial entry. They load it up. They're thinking, whoa! This might be even better. This is the better entry. I'm gonna load up. And at worst, I'm gonna get out break even. All right. They buy again. They double it up. And the market starts going up. And it's crawling up. And they're thinking, I'm gonna try to do in, in a psychology of how your mind might be playing out because this is what I used to think. All right, we're getting some momentum. Ah. Oh. No, maybe we're not. Crap, what should I do? Whoa, 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 wait. It's popping back up. Here we go. Here we go. All right. This is it. No, oh, this is not looking good. I really need this to, to shoot up. I got too big of a position on here, okay? All right, we're going up. And all right. Whew, I'm, my blood pressure is coming back down. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling confident. This is the one. And and here's what it does. Oh no! What am I doing? Okay. Hopefully it's gonna bounce off double bottom right here. My my second entry. And it staggers around. Oh no! What am I gonna do? It's okay. It's okay. It it, it almost let me out at break even here. All right. Oh no, this is not looking good. Not looking good. But you know what? I almost got out break even. I'm gonna keep holding. You know what? This might be the better place to buy again. So I'm gonna buy right here. Okay, here we go. Soon, sure enough, there's dip buyers there. They buy, and it shoots up. Yes, I'm getting out. I'm gonna make money. My paper losses are disappearing. Oh, what am I doing? No. This isn't it. Okay, this is lunchtime chop. I've been holding this for a while. Oh no. I gotta exit out for a big loss now. Boom. I had a bunch of profit and I thought I could go a little bit bigger. I was feeling myself. I was feeling confident. What happened? I made all that money at the beginning of the open. And, you know, dang it. All right, so that's that's like the psychology of what I think of, like, what people do. And and, and here's what I try to do, okay? You buy small, and eh, it's not working out. You know, I'm going to try to get out on this pullback because it's probably not going to let me out. This is not look, looking too good. I really want to just look for the next best entry. I can. I know I'm good enough at scalping that I can get my money back pretty quickly and look for that next best setup and I'm gonna be patient. And I'm trying to recondition my brain to stop thinking of value areas and adding on to uh, losers thinking I've got the better uh, entry. This is the better one, this is the better one, this is gonna be the one. And I just need to take my loss like a boss. This is a saying that I tell myself whenever I take a loss. Psychologically, it makes me feel better about taking the loss. All right, so that's what the losing trader does, and this is what the struggling trader does. But this is what happens, you know, only 25% of the time, okay? So let's say the trader has no stop loss, no, uh, you know. So that's what happens when they blow up, right? They keep thinking, it's called, I call it hope, and then nope. Hope, and then nope. 
all right? Here's what, you know, they'll do the 75% of the time, okay? You buy, they got wide stop loss, comes down, buy again, and then it shoots up. Oh man, I, I was holding through that long drawdown. I gotta get out right here. I don't wanna take a loss. I'm actually a winner on this one. I'm taking my small win. They'll do that time and time again, and then their win rate will look like something like this. I got an 80% win rate, right? 80% I'm winning most of the time. But the other 20% of the time looked like that first drawing that I did. So what I've tried to recon recondition my brain to thinking is is to do the, to flip the exact opposite, okay? So you're uh, instead of adding to the losers, you want to add to the winners, okay? Let's say all right, you uh, you buy. All right, here's the um, you're holding in the drawdown, but it shoots up. It does what you think, okay? It shoots up. Boom! Yes, I got a winner. This is looking like the trend that I was thinking it was gonna be. Here's what the uh, the value area scared trader does, who gets out of losing trades all the time, except for those 20% of the time that it blows them up or ruins his whole week. What he does, okay? All right, he's in a winning trade. Can't add on to a winner. How, how, I can't do that. This is what he's thinking. I can't add on to a winner. No, because that one time before I added on to a winner and it went back and I got nothing. Got nothing, can't do that. So this is what it, you, you got to think the exact opposite. So winners, a lot of smart traders and people who are lasting the longest, like that video from Charlie D that I'm talking about, they will add to winners. Okay, so here's how you add to winners, and I will do a video on that as well. Goes up, and just like the losing position, instead of, uh, um just like the losing position where you would add uh, to a loser, you would add to the winner. So it starts to come back. So you'd want to get in on the pullback, but on the pullback that's going in your favor. All right, so it's coming back. Instead of panicking out thinking, oh no, I can't let this winner turn into a loser or a break even. And if I keep taking profit profits, I can't go broke because Taking, you can never go broke taking profits. Yes, you can, because if your winners are not bigger than your big losers, then you will eventually wipe yourself out, okay? Because you're trying to avoid losing and it eventually will make you lose, all right? So instead of taking your small profit here, you gotta have the guts. You gotta have the, the, the conviction of adding. So you add it here. I mean, you, you bought it here, you add here, because what you really want to see is it come up, come back down, test your area, and then move away from that, okay? It's like the losing trade. Like when you're in a loser, and it, have you ever been in a loser? Think about it. Have you ever been in a loser and it, and it kept looking like it was gonna let you out? Right here? But it doesn't, and it just keeps going against you, and it keeps looking like it's gonna let you out again, and it gets closer, and it doesn't, and it just keeps doing that over and over again? never letting you out at break even you enter a trade and boom you're immediately in drawdown and immediately it keeps looking like it's going to give you hope but then it, I, like i said earlier hope and then nope hope and then nope that's what you want to see but flipped around the reverse okay you want to see the hope for the people who are, are shorting uh, right that they're gonna get back out, they're gonna get out, they don't have to take, cover their shorts. And then nope, then you wanna get in on their nope, okay? So they're having hope. You wanna get in on their hope and nope, all right? When you start to see that little curl back up, you wanna get in, okay? This is how I try to add to winners. Boom, boom. And if you get a long away resistance, you're filling the gap, then you can do it. Because it is much more comfortable after you've conditioned your, your, your mind to think this way, to do that. Uh, and you gotta think it's only paper loss that if you do lose your little small, let's say you, you enter here, small one, right? And it goes in, and then instead of doing this where you can get in, it just comes back down, 
it's okay. Take your small winner if it's getting too close or just get out, break even. I'll put my stop loss right around here. Okay? Either at the break even or just a few ticks just to cover the commissions. You know, so you're not just eating away at commissions. And that's what you got to do. You for this is to make it uh, in the long run. You got to to flip the mentality because the, the normal uh, percentage of traders are doing the exact opposite of what the top 10% of winning traders are doing, which are adding to winning positions. Look that video up, Charlie D from the 80s. He's got a speech on it talking about, you'll know when you're a profitable futures trader when you start adding to winning positions because most traders and a lot of traders that he said that he's been trading with in the pit for a very long time have never even added or even thought of adding to a winning position because they're like the market's here at 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 seven and I got in at seven and the market's here at nine. This is just example random numbers. Get me out. Get me out of this trade. I, I can't take it. I this is a winner. I gotta take my winner. What do you find more painful? Okay. You get in at seven and you get at nine and then you and you see the market goes up to 17 or 18 right and you, you your analysis was right the whole time but you get spooked out because of a little adverse reaction back and instead you should have been thinking hey this is just a minor pullback i know no need to to jump out my analysis was correct the whole time that makes me more more upset more frustrated now because of the way i have tried to uh, condition myself to, to think of trading. You, you don't want to do what most of the losing traders do, which is have hope, lots of hope. You got to get rid of the hopium in trading. And this is what I work on all the time with myself. You can go back on my old videos and I do add on to losing positions sometimes, but it's only within a, a, a small range. And you'll hear me say on a lot of my streaming videos, okay, that's it. This is the, the small amount of range that I, I'm willing to add. I'm fully sized. No more adding to this position. That's it. You, you know, if you do add on to a little bit of a dip, that's okay. But if you're doing the hope and nope thing, you're not going to make it. So this is a lot I have crammed into this video. And I'll probably be rehashing a lot of this stuff that I've talked out, spread out a little bit more in some more videos. But I wanted to make a good solid video with a lot of uh, explanations on how I trade because there is no really just one pattern or one indicator or Fibonacci ratio. There isn't just one way of trading. There's so many ways and everybody has their own styles, but this is my style and what has been working for me. And I hope you liked the video. If so, please hit the like and subscribe if you have not already subscribed and support the channel if you want to be a part of my journey and you want to come on my streams here in the near future. Um, I will start streaming some more and having fun with that and I will see you on the next one.